All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. For those of you who I haven't met, um, I'm Lucy Tolliver. I am on the product marketing team here at LOB, and I am excited to uh, take some time to talk about how LOB can improve your address data. So I'm going to kick it off just by giving you a brief refresher on uh, what who LOB is, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the major challenges that businesses face uh, when it comes to address data and how incorrect addresses can actually really lead to a lot of wasted costs. And then I'm going to discuss how LOB's address verification can solve these challenges, and then of course I'm going to do a quick demo of how LOB's address verification product actually works. All right, so just a quick uh, overview of LOB. Uh, we were founded about six years ago with a leadership team from some of the biggest technology companies um, with really a vision to automate the offline world. And since our founding, we've launched uh, two successful products. We have our API, uh, or excuse me, our printed mail API, and then we also have our address verification API, which is really what we're here to talk about today. And we serve thousands of companies everywhere from large companies like Microsoft, Booking.com, Capital One, um, to small uh, SMB companies, uh, helping them really optimize their uh, shipping verification, uh, they're cleansing their customer databases, and helping to send marketing direct mail, statements, invoices, bills, and even payments. And last year alone, we actually verified over 400 million domestic and international addresses. So one of the things we hear really regularly from our e-commerce and retail customers is the growing importance of their shipping experience. And it really goes without saying that Amazon has driven customer expectation on, on this front. Amazon has this relentless focus on, cost, on cost, delivery, and customer service, and it's created an incredibly high standard that other retailers really have to strive to meet. And nowhere is it more evident than when it comes to the shipping and fulfillment. And customers, even me, just expect to pay little or nothing when it comes to shipping the goods that they buy. And they also expect really rapid delivery and full transparency through the entire process. And these rising customer expectations have forced all companies to really re-examine their shipping experience. To put this simply, uh, exceptional shipping experience is really not, no longer a differentiator, it's table stakes. Uh, for e-commerce companies, retailers, and shippers, other shippers, they must ensure that delivery is quick, it's accurate, and they need to tightly control their costs. But this shipping experience has a really material effect on the actual customer satisfaction and customer lifetime value. Consider that 94% of consumers blame the sender for a poor delivery experience, even if the consumer is at fault. Think mistyped addresses. And 70% say that they're really unlikely to return to that retailer after a bad experience. Again, even if it's the customer that's at fault. And address data is one of the critical points of failure in that shipping process. Undeliverable mail and packages cost businesses over $20 billion a year, according to USPS. And much of this is really just attributed to simple address errors. And then consider that 20% of addresses that are entered online actually contain mistakes. This number is pretty baffling, but when you think about the fact that uh, most people are actually checking out and going through these flows on their mobile device, it's really not that surprising. And this challenge only increases when you look internationally. The complexity of multiple address formats and languages makes it super challenging to capture an accurate, accurate address, state, address. And this, these very small errors can add up to enormous costs. That said, address data is not just impactful for retail and e-commerce. Financial services are becoming increasingly aware of uh, how important address data is for their business. And uh, addresses are important for financial services really uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first being just communications. Financial services are the largest sender of both transactional and marketing mail in the US. Um, and just in 2018, financial services sent uh, 10 billion pieces of transactional mail, such as bills, statements, and account notices, and 16 billion pieces of marketing materials. And the sheer quantity of mail that they're sending really isn't surprising when you consider the customer preference and also the effectiveness of direct mail. Uh, and USPS reports that 60% of households choose to pay at least one bill uh, by mail every year. Additionally, direct mail actually gets 10 times higher response rate than email. And we are near considering the time sensitive uh, information that uh, financial services potentially is sending. Having that really high engagement rate really matters. 
And bringing it back to that number that we saw on the previous slide, 20% of addresses that are entered online contain mistakes, and these, ad these mistakes are going to add up to significant wasted costs just on returned mail, not to mention the actual impact it's going to have on the customer experience. So now I want to talk a little bit about KYC or Know Your Customer Compliance. This is something that's really become a excuse me, a notoriously vague piece of the Patriot Act, and this requires that all financial service providers um, are conducting appropriate due diligence on each of their customers, which in theory sounds really straightforward. However, there's no real clear cut guidelines for how to actually do this. And so companies have to get creative and create these processes themselves, or they're just outsourcing these processes to third party KYC providers. Regardless of how they choose to do this, uh, these compliance costs are significant and they're only going to increase. Uh, just in the last two years, KYC costs on average have increased 19%. And for smaller companies with assets of less than $10 billion, this has actually increased 23%. So what does address data have to do with KYC? Well, all of this information, including address data, is actually that's captured right up front when a customer completes a form. This information is being captured by the financial services company and passed directly on to the KYC provider for verification. So if any of this information contains typos or is invalid, it's gonna be rejected or flagged by the KYC provider. So again, consider that number on the previous slide, 20% of addresses entered online contain mistakes. This means that all of these erroneous addresses are gonna be passed on to the KYC provider and then rejected requiring manual customer support hours to resolve and resulting in huge amounts of wasted costs and delayed customer onboarding. So how can address verification solve these seemingly very different challenges across very different industries? Well, by verifying the customer data right up front at the point of entry, you can ensure that the addresses that are entered into your system, they're, that they're deliverable, that they're accurate, and they're formatted appropriately. So this allows you to reach your customer seamlessly and reduces return to sender packages and mail and thus reducing your wasted costs. And by catching typos and undeliverable addresses at the point of entry, it allows you to handle them elegantly in a way that works for your business. There's no need to send unverifiable addresses to third party providers. With all of that said, I'm going to jump over into the demo portion and I'm going to share my screen and walk through how this all works in, in real time. So visually demonstrating how an API works is a little bit challenging. So to do this and to actually get a visualization and demo of this, we're actually going to use the interface that we provide on Lob's website. So you can do this offline and mess around with some uh, address data of your own um, at a different time. But just for now, we're going to walk through a couple different scenarios. So one of the most basic or probably one of the most important pieces of information that we return um, is deliverability. And we return to five different deliverability statuses based on the information submitted. So we have deliverable, deliverable unnecessary unit, deliverable incorrect unit, deliverable missing unit, and of course, undeliverable. So just to demonstrate a few of these, we're going to just walk through a couple of scenarios. Uh, but again, everything that you see here today, imagine that it's happening on the back end. Um, so either on a front end, uh, client facing form for autocomplete or um, on your internal systems with an API call. So first and foremost, I want to talk about autocomplete. So when a customer is actually typing in the first line of their address, we're going to just use our office address. We miss our office so much. Um, but they're going to see, your customers are going to see suggestions. And this way they're able to choose from one of the drop down and they're going to have all of the information populate below. And this is going to stop any uh, misspellings or typos or formatting issues down the road. And it's going to have that uh, fixed right up front. We're going to have our suite number. We're going to verify. Excellent. So you see that this address is in fact deliverable. And it's actually been formatted and has the zip plus four appended to it, just the way that the USPS prefers it. So of course, spelling errors are a very common reason that uh, bad addresses enter our systems. So we're gonna walk through just an example of what that might be. So we're gonna go ahead and change Barry to Barry with an A, and then potentially we have actually typed Ab instead of street. And then when we go to verify, 
we see that this is still a deliverable address. We actually see that LOBS API has corrected that spelling um, and still made sure that we're including the correct Barry and we're actually going to a uh, street versus Ave. So that's excellent. Another common reason that addresses uh, cause problems is missing the secondary line. So if we go ahead and remove that and hit verify, we see that, see that this is still a deliverable address. However, it is missing a unit number. So that might be totally fine. We might want to proceed ahead with collecting this customer information and bring them through the, the workflow. However, depending on the type of information that we're sending and the reason that we're collecting this address, we might want to provide the customer um, a prompt to ask them to resolve this issue. If you're sending out a credit card, you're probably going to want to make sure that this customer has the uh, unit number included too. If Again, if it's a high value package that you're sending, you're probably going to want to make sure that it is getting to the exact unit. And lastly, if we just type in some gibberish here, hit verify, we see that unfortunately this is not a undeliverable, but this is not a deliverable address, of course. So again, I just want to emphasize, you know, we're passing this deliverability onto you as a footnote that, so that you can then handle it in the way that makes sense uh, for your business. So if that means on-screen messaging, you can do that. If it's uh, having a modal pop-up, or maybe it's just flagging it internally for your customer support team to go ahead uh, and look into uh, any of these uh, address issues. So something else that I want to call out is I'm sure that you noticed that we passed a lot of other information besides just deliverability over in the API call. So we do, of course, include the zip plus four, as well as a number of other pieces of metadata. And I just want to call out a few that we see our customers using quite a bit. And the first is uh, address type. So this address type is actually a residential delivery indicator. So this will determine if the address is commercial or residential. And this can be really helpful for a number of different reasons. One, residential uh, addresses are actually more expensive to ship to than commercial. So sometimes if you want to optimize your shipping costs, you can actually require that a customer puts in a commercial address. Additionally, if you are a financial service provider and potentially underwriting a loan, um, and you wanna make sure that the uh, potential client is adding their residential address and they're not accidentally including their uh, work address, you can actually have your system check and double make sure that this is a commercial, or is, excuse me, a residential address. And if not, pass that information back to the customer asking them to prompt, uh, asking them to correct that information. Um, Additionally, we provide whether it is vacant or not. Just because an address is uh, deliverable doesn't always mean that there is somebody uh, living at that address. We often see people using this to flag potentially fraudulent uh, deliveries. And then we also see this a lot with uh, residential uh, marketing uh, companies that are looking to only send mail to these vacant addresses to potentially get that listing uh, into their uh, real estate pipeline. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this information, and I'm just touching on a few here. Uh, there's a lot that you can do, but I just want you to start thinking about all of the information that is available and how that could actually optimize your workflows and really improve your end customer experience. So all of this is available um, through LOB. So we're bringing together global address verification with client-side autocomplete in a very end-to-end -end developer friendly package that easily integrates with your signup pages and client data platforms. So with LOB, you're able to speed up client data entry and correct any address errors, typos, and verify the deliverability across the globe and to reduce your KYC compliance costs and easily keep all of your client information up to date to ensure the integrity of your database. And when you consider the amount of money that's spent on KYC every year, it's really important to make sure that you're not passing erroneous address data onto those KYC providers and keep your costs as low as possible. We've actually seen our customers be able to reduce the KYC costs by 20% after implementing LOB. So LOB is providing enterprise grade address certification APIs for companies of all sizes. Through the autocomplete, we're providing CAS certified USPS address information, and we're able to provide 
deliverability verification internationally for up to 240 countries and territories. And we're additionally able to do zip code lookup. So by pinging our zip code lookup API, we're able to find additional details about the city, the state, the counties, and other information, all just from uh, that zip code that a customer is entering. So to get started, it's actually free. You can go create your lab account. Um, you actually have 300 verifications per month that are free of charge. Um, so I really encourage you to go in, create an account, start playing around uh, with the test environment. I will also just wanna emphasize we have a batch cleanse tool. So you can actually upload a uh, list of addresses that maybe you have uh, had trouble with in the past and see how Lob handles those and see the information that Lob's able to pass back to you. Again, I really encourage you to go log in uh, and test it out and import uh, a list. All right, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate you taking the time and looking forward to connecting with all of you uh, offline.